It is Thursday, March 19th at 2.12 a.m. There is absolutely no way I'm going to get to sleep anytime soon uh, tonight. So we're going to start off with um, reading Calm for the first time. This is going to be the beginning of the audiobook series of Calm written by the School of Life. On the front cover here, there is a little description of what the book is about, and I'm going to read that right now. Few life skills are as neglected, yet as important, as the ability to remain calm. Our very worst decisions and interactions are almost invariably the result of a loss of calm and a descent into anxiety and agitation. Surprisingly, but very very fortunately, our power to remain calm can be rehearsed and improved. We don't have to stay where we are now. Our responses to everyday challenges can dramatically alter. We can educate ourselves in the art of keeping calm not through slow breathing or special teas, but through thinking. This is a book that patiently unpacks the causes of our great stresses and gives us a succession of highly persuasive, beautiful, and sometimes dryly comic arguments with which to defend ourselves against panic and fury. Now that is at the front cover of the calm book, um, just to give you some insight as to what the book is going to be about. Um, on the back of the book, we've got a, an introduction of what the School of Life is, which is the organization that had published this book, Calm, by the School of Life. I'm going to read what, it's, what it has to say here. The School of Life is dedicated to developing emotional intelligence, believing that our most persistent problems are created by a lack of self-understanding, compassion, and communication. We operate from 10 physical campuses around the world, including London, Amsterdam, Seoul, and Melbourne. We produce films, run classes, offer therapy, and make a range of psychological products. The School of Life Press publishes books on the most important issues of emotional life. Our titles are designed to entertain, educate, console, and transform. Now, knowing what the School of Life is, and what this book is going to be about, let's get right into it. This is Calm... By the School of Life. Here is the introduction. It is about one page long, so we will, I guess we'll go through that and then get on to chapter one. Introduction. Calm has a natural and deep appeal. Most of us long to be more patient, unruffled, at ease, and capable of reacting with quite good humor to life's setbacks and irritants. But we are often still only at the very beginning of knowing how to be calm. Anxiety stalks us through our days and nights. It thrums almost permanently in the background. It may be with us now. One response to agitation has become immensely popular in the West in recent years. Drawn from the traditions of Buddhism, this focuses on emptying the mind through the practice of meditation. The idea is to sit very quietly, perhaps in a special position, and strive through a variety of exercises to empty our minds of content. The aim is to push or draw away the disturbing and unfocused objects of consciousness to the periphery, leaving a central space empty, serene, and minutely aware of itself. Implicitly, this view proposes that a great many of the things we fret about are random and vain, and that therefore, the best solution is to still them. It suggests that our anxieties have nothing in particular to tell us. But there is another approach one that interprets our worries as neurotically garbled, yet critical, signals about what may be amiss in our lives. In this school of thought, the point is not to try to deny or neuter anxiety, rather to learn to interpret it more skillfully, decoding certain valuable shards of information that that our panicky moments are attempting to transmit to us in admittedly very unfortunate ways. Every failure of calm can be analyzed in order to reveal something worth knowing about ourselves. Every worry, frustration, episode of impatience, or burst of irritation has significant wisdom to reveal to us, so long as we take the trouble to to decode it. Rather than strive to empty the mind, a favored route to calm involves looking more carefully and slowly at our own agitated experiences with the aim of clarifying our underlying concerns. This is the path of this book. In it, we look systematically at a range of issues responsible for agitations, furies and rages, unpicking the causes and listening to the content of our troubles, in order to reach a place of calm, wandering through the patient and noble understanding of the curious byways of our minds.